Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Market Webinar with myself, Market Analyst David Madden. Uh, today's date is Monday the 2nd of October uh, and the time is 12.15. Uh, as always with our webinars, I will just leave uh, the risk warning up on the screen uh, for you guys to have a read of it. Uh, it basically says uh, whatever is whatever I state in this webinar is just is is not to be construed as explicit investment advice or trading advice or trading strategies. This is just purely uh, some observations and some personal opinions of mine and some commentary on what's going on in the news and what, and also uh, discussing the discussion about what may or may not happen uh, in some of the big markets that we're going to be looking at. Also by uh, by you guys reading through this this uh, risk warning disclaimer. It also uh, will keep our compliance department very, very happy. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's just a necessary part of the business, but that just is how it goes. It will be the same rundown as always for the webinars that I conduct every single Monday at 12.15, uh, whereby we take a we, we have a quick discussion about what happened over the, over the last, say, 72 hours since Friday's close uh, in London. And then also we talk about the, we have a brief look at the week ahead, the big corporate and economic events on the on the week ahead, and then we run through the major markets, uh, the major indices, and some of the and some of the commodities, currency pairs, and what have you. And as always, if there are any markets that I haven't covered, feel free to just mention in the chat box, uh, and we will then go on from and we we'll happily have to take a look at the market from there. So this is the uh, this is just the the platform. What we can see here is. Uh, with the exception of Spain, uh, we, we've, we've broadly seen a positive uh, risk on day uh, for the equity markets in Europe. Uh, the, the FTSE is at a two and a half, three week high, uh, whereas the the DAX and the CAC in France are at multi month highs, both at, at about kind of three month highs, maybe just a bit more than, than three month highs. Uh, the Italian market is pushed higher as well, uh, but but the, the Spanish market, uh, I'm sure yeah, you, you've seen the news. Over the weekend, uh, on the back of the Catalo Catalonian chaos, uh, the referendum that was held in in the Catalonian region, in the region of Catalonia in Spain yesterday, uh, there was some quite uh, there was some quite horrific scenes uh, coming out of that. Uh, some heavy-handed pol uh, police brutality. Uh, I think a lot of viewers around the world were, were, were shocked and disgusted uh, by what, what, what was in some cases what was seen over the week over the weekends, and the, the heightened tension that we did see. Uh, in Catalonia yesterday uh, has really has really spooked the markets. Uh, the, the Spanish market, the, the Spain 35, the IBEX uh, 35 index is down well over one percent today. Uh, considering that, when you take a look at how the some some of the major European markets are doing, as I mentioned, the FTSE is at a you know near a three week high, uh, pushing higher, and the CAC and the DAX are at multi-month highs and there you have the Spanish market languishing in kind of last place of all the kind of major markets. Uh, that has kind of been kind of the really big news over the weekend. Uh, today is a public holiday in China, but in, over the weekend we did have both manufacturing and also non-manufacturing data out of China, which both showed increases, uh, uh, both the readings for both uh, increases and improvements on the previous month's reading. So the Chinese manufacturing and uh, non-manufacturing sectors are expand are growing at a quicker rate than they were only last uh, the previous for the previous reading. So we've also seen on the back of that, uh, in, in turn, on the back of that is higher copper prices, and in turn, the usual players, Glencore, Anglo American, Rio Tinto, Beachy Built in, these mining companies, they've also been in fairly positive territory on the, on the back of that. Uh, over the weekend, over the weekend, Theresa May announced addition an additional ten billion pounds for the help to buy scheme. So property companies uh, such as Persimmon, Taylor Wimpy, uh, and then you have, you have Barclay Development, um, Red Row, all those sort of major players have, uh, have uh, the big home builders listed on, on, on the London Stock Exchange have also done quite well out of that. Stocks like um, so stocks like per Persimmon have actually traded at an all-time high today on the back of that. Uh, looking, Taking a look at some of the economic data, uh, we've had a mixed enough uh, manufacturing numbers out of the eurozone. Uh, Germany is probably the only kind of uh, the kind of classic eurozone numbers. Germany saw uh, an, an increase uh, in the expansion rate, whereas Italy, France, and Spain 
were actually kind of all kind of actually, if anything, kind of muted to actually maybe a slight deceleration in growth. Uh, we also saw a slight deceleration in the growth rate of the British manufacturing sector as well. Uh, so so, so that, that's well, pound versus the dollar was already kind of losing a bit of ground uh, overnight on account of the strong greenback. So and then when we had a, a base on the UK manufacturing P&I numbers, it just kind of slightly accelerated the sell-off. Uh, taking a look at the week ahead, I'm sure if you're a regular regular uh, person, regular uh, subscriber to this, to this podcast, you know where they are. But if you don't, if you go to our homepage and then under the news and analysis section, click on news analysis. This is updated uh, several times a day. This is the, the main news and uh, articles that myself um, and, the, and the other analysts at CMC in the English speaking world publish on this site. Some of our articles gets, gets published here, others get published on Inside, which, which is on our trading platform, which I'll show you later on. But we also, what we do is every Friday, uh, there will be a week ahead article which gets posted to the website. So where it says here, filter by, click on topic, and third one down, weekly outlook. Click on the weekly outlook here, and it gives you a rundown of both the major corporate and economic stories for the week ahead of us. So looking at we have the we have a, a interest rate decision from the from the Reserve Bank of Australia the RBA tomorrow. Uh, looking ahead to Wednesday and well, bearing in mind the, the strength of the Australian dollar could be something uh, which could potentially curtail growth rate in in Australia. So the consensus is for the, the RBA to keep rates at hold at one point one point five percent. And obviously the Reserve Bank of Australia is sort of in their interest to keep their currency. Uh, as well, a bit, a bit's kind of softer if they can, because the Aussie dollar has been doing fairly well recently. A strong currency could end up end up actually curtailing their growth. Looking to Wednesday, as I mentioned at the top at the top of the show, we had the manufacturing numbers uh, from China, from the, the eurozone, and from the UK today. We're going to have a plethora of service man, service PMI reports coming out on Wednesday. Um, so, so keep an eye on on that. We have numbers coming out from from Tesco, the big UK retailer, on Wednesday, and also we have uh, numbers coming up from the US drinks company PepsiCo. Uh, we do have a couple, a couple of other companies reporting their numbers this week, but to be perfectly honest, uh, it's a bit sort of slim pickings. As I mentioned, we have Pepsi on Wednesday. I also mentioned we have, we have Tesco on Wednesday. Scrolling down here, Costco fourth quarter numbers out on Thursday, uh, and then that will be, and then DFS Furniture have full year figures out on on thursday but to be honest it's a relatively quiet week in terms of the co uh, corporate reporting taking a look now to the FTSE 100 uh it's broken well it's broken nicely above uh the 7400 level and uh, as you can see here so the big picture uh for the FTSE 100 has been has been pushing higher created an all-time high in june Lost some ground over the summertime, but we are seeing a resurgence now. So I'll just zoom the camera, zoom the, the camera, the the, the the kind of the scroller in, and take a closer look at how the FTSE is doing. So the strength of the sterling uh, really kind of drove drove the uh, the, the FTSE lower here uh, to the kind of lows of, of September. But since then, over the last two two and a half weeks, nearly three weeks, uh, the FTSE has been pushing higher. As you can see, it was in negative momentum. The negative momentum uh, declined, and then now it swung to positive momentum, so you can be kind of more confident that this upward move is to continue. We're now just trading just pretty much on the 100-day moving average at this level here in around 7,420. And seeing as we, it has a bit of a, a bit of um, previous um, form of kind of acting as acting as support. While while the market was 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 above that metric, and it was also a, kind of a, a metric which on, on occasion acted as, as resistance when the market was uh, was was below it and trying to push above it. So if we do break north and, and uh, of the, the of the 100 day moving average at 7,420, we could be then looking towards the September high of 7,461. Beyond that, we could potentially look to the August high of 7,552, and then beyond that again. We look to the all-time high of just seven, just shy of 7,600. As I mentioned, the UK service numbers are coming out during the week. That's going to impact potentially impact the pound and in turn impact the FTSE 100. Any kind of moves to the south on the FTSE 100 could potentially 
get support from the 200 day moving average in around 7,340 in or just south of that 7,337 notice how once the market had a fairly decisive break through it if they, uh, any kind of rallies were sort of running running out of steam just before it kind of got to it and then it finally actually made a decisive break through it so that may act as support should we move south again and if we do take out the trendy moving average to the downside we could then be looking back towards 7,233 and then south of that, we could, we could potentially see a, a retesting of the September low at 7,195. The DAX is in far better shape. Um, we're, we're talking about a three-month high or, or you know a 14-week high. Uh, it's, it's, it's done quite well. It's actually not, not too far away from the all-time high on the DAX. So keep an eye on what's going to be going on on the German market. The downward kind of channel that I was in is broke clearly out of that. Um, nearly, you know, nearly one month ago, it's been kind of pushing higher. It's slightly concerning though that that, that positive momentum isn't per overly high. It certainly has been ticking higher, but the most important indicator to keep an eye on is the price, and the price is is, is pushing higher. Uh, so that is the most important thing that you, you need to be keeping an eye on. So as you can see here, it's creating multi-week highs, multi-month highs. The all-time high comes into play at twelve thousand nine hundred and fifty-four. So we're about probably 98 points sh shy of that. And bearing in mind on, on the DAX, that isn't a major move. That's probably a percentage of about 0.8%, 8 tenths of 1%, so which isn't a massive move for the DAX. So we're within less than 100 points of the old, of the all-time high in the DAX. So, you know, for, for near for a record, record high, for multi-month multi highs, and we're very close, recently close to the all-time high. It just goes to show you the kind of bullish sentiment that is out there for the Germany 30, for the DAX. Any pullbacks uh, we do see on the, on, the, on the Germany 30 may get support in around this, this area here in around 12,855. And then south of that, maybe down towards 12,700. The U.S. markets are even, are even in better shape yet again. Taking a look now at what's going, what's, what's going on with the Dow Jones, the US 30. As you can see here, I know the official cash trading hasn't begun today, but the futures market are indicating a yet another record high for the Dow Jones. Um, buying on the dips has been a popular strategy uh, with, uh, with, with some traders in the last number of months. Uh, as the market's going on to, to create record highs, that's an indication of what, what the overall sentiment is. And as I mentioned, price is the most important indicator. The, the markets are regularly ratcheting up new record highs. That's that's the um, that's the that's the position you could you, you, you could be uh, looking towards. So any kind of moves lower in the, the Dow Jones, the US 30 may find support in around this price area here, just shy of 22,300, and then south of that again, the kind of the big. Uh, pullback that we, that we saw in, in the kind of mid to late September at 22,216 and then to the to, to the upside people uh, the traders will often keep an eye out because it's fresh territory uh, traders will often be kind of keeping an eye out for big numbers such as you know 22,500, 600, 700 and so on. As I mentioned before it's ever so slightly concerning that while the markets are pushing on here to new Push, pushing on to record highs, we're not really that seeing that that being reflected in the momentum. Uh, it could be it could be a sign that the kind of buying rate, the kind of energy that the bulls have, is kind of running out of steam. But nonetheless, if the market's uh, printing, uh, is going to be kind of printing kind of all time highs, I would you know the price in, in this case is more important than what the momentum indicator is showing. It's a reasonably similar view. Uh, if, we, if we look now at the S&P 500. Oh, I always do that. Open, open the wrong chart. Again, S&P 500. Similar situation, whereby the big picture, the trend has been higher. We have seen some fairly decent pullbacks, but those pullbacks uh, didn't last particularly long. Well, those, those pullbacks were, were then... Uh, were then, put, were then made up and then went on to create new highs. So as you can see here, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy over the last number of months. And similar to the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 futures are pointing to yet another new all-time high. 
Uh, so once again, any kind of pullbacks we do see on the S&P 500 may find support in around this price area here of 2,510, 2,507. South of that, the kind of this the steep pullback we saw in September at 2,488, and then south of that in uh, 2,480. And then similar to the similar to the Dow Jones, uh, traders will, will often be looking towards kind of hand, big big numbers. Uh, because this is you know fresh territory, uh, fresh records. Uh, so you could be looking towards 2,530, 40, 50, so on and so forth. It's a bit more encouraging that you see as the the market was pushing higher here, go on to create in the last couple of trading sessions, uh, fresh all-time highs. It was a bit more encouraging to see that, that that the momentum here, the positive momentum, is actually increasing. So that way you can feel a bit more confident. Uh, that the upward move is likely to continue because when you have the when you have the price and the momentum, the momentum moving in the same direction, that, that that's when you can be more confident that the move is going to continue. On the flip side of this positive news for the equity markets is poor old gold, uh, which has uh, which, is, which has been kind of pushing lower the last number of weeks. So uh, in, in kind of mid September, uh, gold early September gold hit a 13 month high. And has been giving up ground ever since. Uh, I've been pushing lower now uh, for over two weeks. Well, for, for, for over three weeks now. Uh, it's now trading uh, at 12.73. The 100-day moving average isn't too far away from here. It comes into play around 12.72, 12.70. Uh, and notice how the 100-day moving average did act as a bit of support uh, in August and also in July as well. So it does have a bit of form of providing support. Uh, for for the gold market when the gold market was pushing higher, so we could potentially see uh, some buyers enter the fold in around the kind of 1272, 1270 region for gold. But the price is pushing lower. It's 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 uh, notice how it kind of bounced off of the the 50 day moving average, had a had a bounce back, and then a, a decisive move south of the 50 day 50 day moving average. So that 50 day moving average may now act as resistance if you do if you do see any kind of moves higher. On the price of gold, which should be in, in around the 1296 region, and then of course the kind of psychological 1300, uh, the big number, and then north of that 1316. These are all levels for potential for resistance if you do see the, the price of gold push higher, and then north of that again, uh, 1334, and the 13 month high at 1358. If you do break south. Of the 100-day moving average in around the 1272-1270 region, that we, we could see uh, a, a further push lower, a re, uh, back down towards the 200-day moving average, which comes into play just south of the 1250 region, 1249. Notice how negative momentum is 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 still is still quite high, so it gives you an idea of uh, where where um how much kind of uh, power is behind the, the, the sellers. Uh, we, we've yet to see any kind of waning of the of the uh, momentum uh, and negative momentum at the same and, and at the same time we've yet to see any kind of a sign that this down that this that this downward trend uh, has come to an end. Taking a look now at the price of the oil markets. I take a look now at Brent. Bearing in mind Brent had a really good run uh, in the last few weeks. Uh, whereby Brent went on to hit a 26-month high only last week. Uh, this actually just just six six tra six days ago had a, a 22 months so 26 month high right, rather, uh, and it's been giving up some ground since then. So, but then again, if you hit a 26-month high, you, you are going to potentially see it's hardly surprising to see some profit taking. So it's kind of went on to hit a multi-year high. Ever since then, we've been giving up some of the, some of the gains uh, that I had that I has registered for the time being. It may find support in around the it's just it's just north of fifty six dollars a barrel for Brent. Uh, we we may find some support at fifty six the, the number itself, and, and then if he moves south of that, we could be we, we could see a retesting of fifty five, or or in south of that again, we could see a retesting of fifty three eighty three. But bearing in mind the big picture. You know, if you're at multi-year highs, that, that that's telling you there's a lot, lot of kind of bullish of sentiment still in uh, in the market. It's been in a fairly clear and concise upward trend since uh, since since June. 
Uh, it's only if you're kind of looking heading back south of the, the 50 day moving average, uh, which comes into play in around 50, 53, 50, or the 200 day moving average at 52, 53. A move south of that may then bring the kind of upward move from, uh, from June into question. And if that were to be the case, we could then see a move, a retesting of the 100 day moving average at $51.21. Notice how we did see a bit of support. Uh, at the 100 day moving average price uh, in, all, in both July and also August. It is worth pointing out that as the market was, was coming off here, positive momentum uh, slipped and then of course actually swung at the negative momentum. So, so the price is moving lower, momentum is moving, is, is, is in negative territory. So we could see a bit of a, we could see a continuation of the downward move and then whether that whether that's just a dip, a correction in the wider positive move, or whether the beginning of something new, we'll, we'll have to see kind of what level it takes out on the way down. It's a, a similarish looking chart when we turn our attention to WTI. WTI didn't have the kind of quite bullish run that Brent did, but it did hit a four month high um, only at the back end of last week. So we can see here uh, WTI, West Texas and Intermediate, Trading at its highest level uh, since since April this this year, so it got to a four month high. And similarly, with, like like a Brent, we have seen a bit of a tailing off uh, in the in the price, but it should be kind of continued to move lower in the price of, of Brent. We could potentially find support in in at the 200 day moving average at forty nine dollars and thirty cents. As the as it's at a as a recent hit in multi month high, it would kind of suggest that uh, and I did take out the May high. It would suggest that the kind of overall sentiment is still fairly bullish on the energy market. Uh, bearing in mind, we have the OPEC meeting coming up in November. OPEC have already already been making noise about potentially, or some OPEC members have been making noise about potentially extending the production freeze uh, by three months out until the end of June 2018. Uh, so that's just something to keep an eye on. It's also worth pointing out that we actually saw an increase in the number of active rigs on the Baker Hughes rig count from the United States over the weekend. Uh, so just keep an eye on that. Uh, but sh should we ha should we remain north of the 200 day moving average on, on WTI at $49.30? It's, po it's, 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 po it's, po it's, it's a potential possibility uh, that we could see the continuation of the wider upward move in Brent, in WTI. And if that is the case, uh, the levels to, to watch out for to the upside uh, would be the September high of $52.53. Keep an eye on that level. And then some, some buyers might be then looking towards the April high at $53.56. And then north of that again, um, some bulls might be keeping an eye on the February high of $54.63. Whereas if we move, if we take out the 200 day moving average to the downside, we may find some, uh, we may find some buying coming to play in around the $48 per barrel level. Just turning our attention now to the currency markets. Having a look at the euro versus the US dollar. So after a great run for many months and, and you know and hitting a multi-year high, uh, the euro dollar in September have been largely been selling off since then. I mean, as you can see here, the price has been pushing lower. Negative momentum is on is has been on the has been on the rise, and if and the ever since it traded south of the 50-day moving average, it's found it difficult to get back above that metric. So for the time being, while we remain south of of the 50-day moving average on the euro dollar, which is in around the kind of 118.50 region or 118.49 region, uh, we could see uh, the, this the, the negative move that's been in place for the last few weeks continue. And if you do, if you do, if you do, kind of keep to keep south of that metric, uh, we could see it. We could see a pullback to the August low of one sixteen, sorry, one sixteen sixty two, and then south of that, uh, in the one of these, one of the kind of one of the spikes lower in July at one sixteen thirteen, and then if we take all that level as well, we we might even see a pullback. To the 100-day moving average at 115.75, but should we take, should we uh, recapture and retake the 50-day moving average, uh, which is in around the kind of 118.50 region, 
we can then see a potential move back up towards 119, 120. And if you get back up to the kind of 120 handle, that could be a sign that the kind of at that at the kind of negative move we've you've seen over the last few weeks was only just a correction and the kind of wider upward trend. And then the traders and bulls we, we could potentially be looking towards the uh, the recent the September high of 120.92 and then looking towards 121 and 122. But notice how the momentum is still very much in negative territory. You know, you, you would want to see a cooling of that uh, as the price is, is pushing higher. Cable, uh, the pound versus the US dollar is not too dissimilar to what we've seen on the euro versus the US dollar. So, so the kind of big picture has been quite positive over the last number of months on the pound versus the US dollar. Uh, lurching higher, the pullback, going to, going to kind of new highs, going to new kind of multi-week highs, multi-month highs, followed by a, a lower, followed by a higher low. And after the kind of great run I had in September, uh, we, we, we have been pushing lower since this, this area here. The wider trend is still, is upper trend is still in, in play, but seeing as the price has, uh, has been coming off quite aggressively, and we can see a fairly clear and concise decline in positive momentum and even a swing into negative momentum. Uh, the momentum is clearly to the downside. We haven't seen any any of the buying pressure, uh, any uh, cool as of yet. So we could see a further move south from the, in the pound versus the US dollar. So a potential level to watch out for to the downside is this price here, which is which is the which is uh, 132.67. And then south of that, we, we may we could find some we could find some support in around this area here, which is the 50-day moving average in at 131.96. Oh, sorry, 131, 131, uh, 29, 29 rather, the 50-day moving average. And then south of that, the the one or day moving average comes into play at 130. These are areas that we could potentially see if, if the market does continue to move lower, we could see in the near term moves uh, down towards these metrics but also as the tra as the kind of wider trend uh, upper trend is still in play these are also metrics um, which we could see buyers enter the fold because you can notice here as uh, the market was pushing higher we did see a bit of support from the 100 day moving average uh, and also both metrics uh, provided as a bit of support uh, in, in the early quarter of the year as well but if you do happen to take out the 100 day moving average then some traders were then looking towards the 30 moving average in at 127.46. Just change over now to the euro versus the US dollar. So not too dissimilar to the euro dollar and also the pound dollar whereby the euro for the euro sterling has had a great run uh, for, for many months on, until it all came uh, until we saw a large sell until hitting a uh, until a fairly large turnaround uh, which began over uh, well, actually about five or six weeks ago so quite an aggressive decline in the euro versus the british pound uh, starting from, from late august crashed through the 50-day moving average, crashed below the 100-day moving average, and now it seems to be sort of trapped uh, in between the 100-day moving average to the upside and this price here in at from the July low uh, in at 87.38 to the downside. Uh, so we, we, it, it would be nice to get a break either side, either direction uh, out of this kind of rel relatively uh, tight range. So a break to the upside should we take off the one-day moving average, which is in around the kind of 89.00 level. We could then see a push higher up to the 50-day moving average at 90.23, and then north of that up towards 90.88, and then to 91.60. But if you can't break north of the one-day moving average, and if you do take off the the, uh, the July low at 87.38, we could we could see some buying come into play. In on the 30 moving average in at 87.24, but then south of that we could be looking back towards the 86 region. Notice how while the price was in a kind of sharp decline here, we did see a, in a quite an aggressive ramping up of the negative and the of the negative momentum. 
and then we saw the all the kind of intense selling pressure dissipate here. So, so it's all we're almost back to kind of almost like almost like neutral momentum. So it's almost like the kind of the, the, the bulls, or sorry, the bears rather, uh, have kind of run out of steam, and, all, and and the kind of severe selling pressure has has declined. So it's almost like the market is at one of those points whereby after this quite aggressive rally from the lows of April up to uh, the, the high in August. Is this move just going to be a correction in the wider positive trend, or is it going to be something that where the market turns over on itself? And that's where, if we if we do get a break out of this region, could be an indication of whether we're heading back up to retest the August highs, or whether we're actually going to be actually um, the market is going to be turning over on itself. So, what if, if the market does if the market does break north? What you'd like to see is you'd also like to see a increase. In, you'd like to see see positive momentum come back on the radar and then increase uh, from there or vice versa if the if the market is, is pushing lower you would also like to see that being mimicked by an increase in negative momentum just turning our attention now to the the the, the japanese yen us dollar versus the japanese yen if there's anything you'd like to me to cover um, that I haven't covered already, feel free to stick it in the box and I will just happily talk about that in one second time. So take a look now at the dollar yen. The dollar yen has been ha hanging on nicely, uh, despite the fact that it's been broadly been pushing lower, uh, largely throughout 2017. The fact that it's had quite an, an aggressive turnaround in September because there's been a a broad increase in in the U.S. dollar, it's managed to kind of take out some of the some of the um, the lower highs that we witnessed from in July and August. Now it now it managed to retake the 200-day moving average. Why we re we remain north of the 200-day moving average, which comes into play, roughly speaking, around 112, the outlook could potentially remain positive for the dollar versus the yen. And if that is the case, uh, levels to watch to the upside to, to potentially look out for. Could be this uh, one of the highs from July in at 113.57, and then north of that again, the actual high in July at 114.49. But if you do manage to uh, break below the 30 moving average in around 112, again, that level may then become act as resistance to any kind of moves higher, and then move to the downside might find support. You know, the 100 day moving average at 111.05. Notice how the 100 day moving average was acting as a bit of resistance, well, stroke of support in around this price area here. As it was going north, it found it difficult to break north of it, but once it got above it, if that price action, that, that metric then actually began to support the, uh, the positive move. And a, a move south of the of uh, 111.05 could then see a return down towards 109.55. And then south of that again, the September low of 107.32. So now that we've covered uh, the main markets, uh, I'll just give you a quick, as always, show you a quick kind of um, rundown of where we where we also have other items on our uh, trading platform. Uh, at the top of the show, I talked about how we have the week ahead. We have the week ahead. Cal um, we have a week ahead article um, talking about the main economic and also corporate events of the week. If you go to the market pulse tab, fourth option down, you can see the market calendar. Gives you a full breakdown uh, of the major um, the major economic events of the week ahead of us. You can just scroll through it here. It'll give you the previous reading. It'll also give you the forecast reading. And then once the number is actually out itself, it'll then actually be in the box um, populated immediately as soon as the number itself is out so this is obviously keeping if you're trading in particularly currencies it's something that you uh, need to be aware of and keep an eye on obviously with the uh, the big the big one to keep out for keep an eye out for this week is going to be the non-farm uh the non-farm payrolls which are mentioning our non-farm payrolls in just one second so under that tab there market pulse we also have the insight section and uh, this is the insights here. As I mentioned, some of our, our some of our news analysis that we analysts create uh, goes to our the news goes on, to, goes on to our website, where some of it goes onto the actual inside itself on the trading platform. That gets up updated regularly throughout the day. What we also do as well is what you can see here: chart forums. 
uh, for myself and other other analysts. What we do is we upload um, kind of a very kind of short, uh, a few hundred characters, a few hundred, a couple hundred words of what's going on with any particular chart and discuss prices we, we may see, uh, which, which could be of interest in the future. And also, lastly, looking at uh, other uh, events that we that we are we are holding here, um, looking at other events. Um, what we can see here is tomorrow uh, in our London office at 6:30 p.m. London time, we do have we do have an in-house webinar. So we do have an, an in-house seminar rather, uh, and, and the title of that of that seminar is called Mastering the Mind and the uh, and the Markets. On Wednesday at 7:30 p.m. London time, we have a webinar uh, covering tr the defined trading strategy. And on Friday, the 6th of October at 1:15 British Summer Time, we will have our non-farm payrolls webinar covering what's going the big moves, covering the numbers and the big moves that are going on in the numbers as well. Um, to do. -do. The market that is moving by far the most today, and it's it's in the, it's in the headlines for all the wrong reasons, uh, is the Spanish market. The IBEX 35, unlike uh, what we saw in, see, if we just can we just ignore the Catalan situation for just one moment. The Spanish 35 has been actually been kind of pushing lower all the way, uh, broadly speaking, throughout the summer, whereby we did see us a push, we did see a, a, a decline. And then a snap higher about the about the, the German market and also the French market, whereby the Spanish market has been broadly pushing lower uh, throughout throughout the entire throughout the summertime. With this, with the exception of this kind of snap push higher, where it did break north on the 50-day moving average, it was in broadly sp speaking uh, being held. Kind of, it's, not, it's broadly found it difficult to to gain ground north of the 50-day moving average, and we can see here. Even at the back end of last week, it, it, uh, it really struggled with that metric. So while the, the Spanish market remains south on the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 10,386, it's likely we could see the market uh, re remain under pressure. But at the same time, it's also getting a bit of support from the 2-day moving average, which comes into play at 10,029. So keeping an eye on the, uh, on, on the market here itself, this level here is a level to keep an eye out for. Um, 10,100 or 10,087, I believe, is the low in September. And then south of that, uh, traders will then be looking towards the kind of the 10,000 level itself. Should we break north of the 50-day moving average at 10,381, we can then find potentially some resistance uh, in, in this price area here at 10,445, and then north of that at the 100-day moving average. Of 10,546. Now I appreciate your time. Uh, feel free to tune in next Monday at 12:15. And as I mentioned, we do have other about seminars and a one in-house webinar um, going on at our London office this week. Uh, I've been David Madden. Thank you for tuning in. P please tune in next week. Have a good trading week and good luck.